Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg in Rockville. Welcome to this week's episode of Kibitzing with Kagan, brief conversations with people I find fascinating. With me today is Montgomery County's brand new Sheriff, Max Wee. Mr. Sheriff, welcome to this week's episode. Thanks for taking the time to chat. Thank you, Senator. It's, it's wonderful to be here. Good. So I am so eager to help people learn more about the Office of the Sheriff and about you. Even though you've just gotten through a campaign, there are a lot of folks who don't pay that much attention. But let's start with your childhood. Where did you grow up? When did you decide to go into the Army? And how did it prepare you and interest you in uh, law enforcement? Sure, no, absolutely. Um, so I grew up in the Bay Area, uh, outside San Francisco. I was actually born in Santa Clara, uh, 1972. I just turned 50 this year. So it's been a great Congratulations. Um, thank you. And um, when when I was growing up, uh, I, I had the um, uh, luxury of having uh, my mother went to Berkeley. Uh, my dad is an immigrant. He's uh, Chinese descent. He was actually born in the Philippines, first generation fell in love with my mother after he uh, obtained his master's at MIT in physics and made his way out to California. So um, I love to spend time uh, hiking uh, around the Bay Area and had been a Boy Scout and I was actually a police explorer in high school. Um, I really love the outdoors, but I also really love um, service. Uh, so um, whether we were assisting with fingerprinting or helping out during area um, uh, gatherings in, in our city, I grew up in Fremont. Uh, California. Um, I was a great student, um, but I, I had this uh, draw to um, service. And uh, when I graduated high school, I actually enlisted in the U.S. Army. And um, I probably watched too many movies. I enlisted as a <laughs> unsigned airborne ranger. Um, mm. But uh, when I was in training, based on my test scores and my background, a really clean background and, and, and that type of thing, um, I was recruited to serve in the Old Guard, the 3rd U.S. Infantry Old Guard, and that uh, unit uh, supports the ceremonial mission in Arlington National Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So most folks know um, and recognize members of the Old Guard um, that march at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Sure. I did not do that. Um, I, however, started out rendering honors with the rifles, um, doing the 21-gun uh, salute rifle volleys and uh, supporting uh, veterans that passed away in the different area cemeteries around the DC area. Uh, I also- um, I have to say, every time on on uh, at the Memorial Day Parade and all that, even when I know it's coming, the 21 gun salute, every time I jump, <laughs> it always- It, it, yeah. it is, it, it definitely is very emotional. And uh, if yes. you're in um, or any anything like that um, yes. definitely evokes that 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 emotional response for me. So then um, you came to the sheriff's office, and well, I did. I I I um, served in a number of roles in the military. Uh, specifically, I was selected to be in the White House Colored Guard um, for a period of time for a couple of years, and I marched uh, uh, Clinton's President Clinton's inauguration and um, a number of state dinners. But you're right nice. when I when I got out of the military. Um, I, I really wanted to get into law enforcement, and it was very difficult at that time. It was a little different environment. Um, this was 94, and it was very challenging uh, to get into uh, different law enforcement agents in the area, but I found the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, and I was fortunate to get hired in June of 1994 um, with the Sheriff's Office, um, and I'm on my 29th year now. Yes, so we're going to we're gonna talk through a bunch of stuff, but let's start with exactly what does the sheriff do? You know, we grew up maybe with Andy Griffith or something as, uh, and Barney Fife, and they were either bumbling or, you know, your favorite uncle or something. Let's talk about what it is in Montgomery County. So we don't walk around with one bolt in our pocket, um, <laughs> but we but we do, um, we certainly pride ourselves on service. So in, let me start by saying in Maryland, uh, every county to include Baltimore City has an elected sheriff and a sheriff's yes. office. The duties and responsibilities of each of the different sheriff's office may vary widely. In Montgomery County, uh, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, uh, it dates back to 1777. Yep. So we're on our 245th anniversary. The oldest law enforcement organization in Montgomery County. It is. That's correct. That's correct. Yep. So when you compare it to the county police, 
that was formed in 1922 with a small number of, um, at that time, male officers um, um, up until that point from 1777 to 1922, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office was the law enforcement um, entity here in the county. So when you get to 2022, now going into 2023, in essence, we're the law enforcement arm of the courts. Yes. So we don't run the jail system. That's run by the Montgomery County Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, or as your viewers likely know, the Montgomery County Police Department is the primary law enforcement agency in the county. So they're allotted roughly 1,200 sworn officers. And if you compare that to our 200 staff, roughly 155 sworn deputies, we're significantly smaller. Sure. But we do have a unique role. So if I may touch on some of the sections within no. the sheriff's office. Absolutely. So evictions, domestic violence. Why don't you for now just do like briefly the, the umbrellas and then we'll sure. go deeper from there. Sure, absolutely. So we have four divisions in the sheriff's office. Uh, we have our court services division. Um, we have our, um, and I can get into that if you'd like, or I can just hit each of the divisions. Uh, we have our civil division. Um, we have our, uh, which is civil and criminal. We have our family division. And then we have our administrative division which is the smallest, but in many ways our most impactful. So our largest uh, division, the court, court services division, um, the uniformed deputies that will transport incarcerated persons, if anybody has to leave the, 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 um, the jails for whatever reason, whether it's a court appointment, uh, a medical appointment or some other matter, our deputies are charged with safely moving them and, yes. and taking them to their, to their um, appointments. Um, Within that uh, court services division, we also provide security for our uh, circuit court um, and our, uh, our ju judicial staff, so certainly the judges and the staff within the circuit court. And we do work at the two district courts in Silver Spring and Rockville, and we maintain temporary holding facilities, and we work very closely with our partners in those facilities as well. Yes. Um, within our civil division, uh, as the name implies, we have deputies that serve civil process. And under that division, we also have, and you'd mentioned this, uh, our eviction section and our attachment section. And each of these- uh, Say what sections, attachment is, please. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So if you were to have, let's say, a case against me, and I owed you some type of money or judgment, and it was found that you, uh, in favor of you, and let's say for whatever reason, I wasn't fulfilling that judgment, um, money or property- our office would get a court order and we would go out and we would facilitate um, taking that money or seizing that money and making sure that it gets back to you. So fulfilling yep. that court order. Thank uh, you. Catching, absolutely. Um, and then evictions is the name evictions. implies. Uh, we will post notice and um, we will conduct uh, court ordered evictions here in the county. That's certainly one section that I would love to have zero evictions take place yes. in the county. Yes. Uh, we How many were, did we have in the past year, if you know, roughly? Um, the number was significantly smaller than what we post. Uh, we post a number of several thousand landlord and tenant um, cases. But by the time you dwindle them down, um, they're, they're a couple hundred. Um, however, I recognize, you know, each eviction is, has a significant impact on the, on the, the families that are involved. Of course. Uh, we had a lot of success, I will mention, working with our partners with Health and Human Services and other mm -hmm. advocates within the county. And I know one of one of my roles, I want to try to expand that partnership so that we can take advantage of, um, there are funding streams available that can assist um, renters in certain circumstances and, and the ability to, to continue to provide uh, that outreach ultimately helps everyone. So keep going, the family um, sure. division. Sure. Um, so our family division is over at our Family Justice Center. So um, what your viewers may not know is the sheriff's office is in charge of running and facilitating the Family Justice Center, which is a one-stop shop to provide support for victims of domestic violence. Co-located in our Family Justice Center, which is in Rockville, um, it are members of our state's attorney's office, um, specialized prosecutors, Montgomery County Police Department detectives, that have uh, specialized in the discipline of domestic violence. We have victim advocates and also some non-governmental um, folks who- Nonprofits. And whole goal is to yes. provide services 
to victims so they don't need to go all over the county. Yeah, uh, my wonderful I, Senate colleague, Shelley Hedelman, just came down from Baltimore City uh, a week or two ago and visited family the Family Justice Center. So I think we are somewhat of a role model. We are, um, we are. I was very fortunate to be one of the first deputies assigned to our domestic violence section in the, in the mid 90s, which was, which was several years before the Family Justice Center. And during that time, um, survivors or victims would have to go all throughout the county to get different yes. services. So yes. we're, we're very proud of um, what is what is a model facility here. In and just to be clear, a very tiny educational opportunity here, which is uh, survivors of domestic violence are of all uh, races, ethnicities, uh, languages, backgrounds, socioeconomic levels, right? This isn't some small Absolutely pocket correct. that we're worth talking about. Absolutely correct. Um, you know, there is no- uh, There's no stereotype. No, right. Um, the vast majority of survivors are women, but certainly men um, yes. uh, endure uh, domestic violence as well. But as you mentioned, domestic violence and family violence run the gamut. And it is unfortunate that uh, even in the recent years with the pandemic, we've seen a marked increase. Yes. Um, and our staff has had to really innovate to do outreach um, virtually to support victims. Yes. And let's go to the fourth section, which is the administrative section. Absolutely. So, um, so the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office is actually an accredited law enforcement agency. What that means is we prescribe the best practices in law enforcement. So we certainly don't oh. the, uh, just do the minimums that the state mandates. And within the administrative uh, division, um, they are responsible for making sure that our policies are up to date, uh, that they evolve with the uh, the law and uh, uh, current training. We're also responsible for our recruiting and hiring and overall training, uh, both entry level uh, when somebody goes to the police academy, as well as uh, what we call field training, which following graduation from the approximately six month academy is that um, uh, applying your academy training in the field. So field training evaluation, so roughly three month program. Um, the other things that our administrative division oversees, and, and there's a number of them, uh, we actually oversee our uh, CEO program. So we support our oh, what program? community engagement officer program, Thank you. Uh, which is formerly the school resource officer program. Yep. Um, yep. So we, we, we are proud to support the needs of Magruder High School um, uh, with our uh, county police partners and other municipalities. Okay, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole into school resource officers because this will be a two hour right, uh, right. conversation <laughs> if we do. You said you have roughly 200, uh, 200 folks, uh, 200 officers. Can you give us an idea? Uh, and obviously started off as all men and all white men. Can you give us a sense of the gender and ethnic diversity? Sure. No, that's a great question. So the breakdown is it's, it's a little over 150, about 155 deputy sheriffs. Those are our sworn personnel. And the remainder are um, civilian support personnel, uh, civilian support staff. Uh, that, that, you know, together we uh, make up the sheriff's office. So absolutely, um, the sheriff's office, uh, much like a lot of law enforcement agencies in, in, the, in its infancy, was composed of white males. And there was um, that uh, vision, usually it was probably a, 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 a big um, stout, stout white male, um, but we are, we have since evolved from that. Um, I'm actually fortunate to be the first Asian American sheriff ever elected in the state of Maryland uh, as the 62nd ah. sheriff of Montgomery mm -hmm. County. I'm very proud mm -hmm. of that. Um, and the sheriff's office today really mirrors our uh, the community we serve. Nice. Uh, we have we have deputies and civilians. Fifty percent women, then more than fifty percent women. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> we're, getting, okay. we're getting there, and that's a great question. I apologize; I don't have that number right in front of me. Okay. Um, but when I look at just even my command staff with our captains, uh, we have one black female, one white female, um, uh, uh, one uh, white male and one Hispanic male. And that's just our okay. four division captains. And we look throughout the organization. We have we have veterans. We have um, uh, minorities. We have Asians, uh, Latinos. 
Latino non, non-native English speakers of several different languages, I hope. We do. We have um, um, several folks that um, uh, English is not their primary language. Um, and um, they're such a valuable resource when we are um, in communities uh, that they that they mirror. But I will tell so, you that. Good. No, go ahead. I, I will tell you that, and, and we'll probably get to this. One of one of my goals is to really make inroads into um, communities that don't view law enforcement as a traditional um, career path in their in their communities. It's really critical because the one challenge that I see is recruiting, hiring, and retention, and it is okay. it is a similar uh, challenge across the country and regionally. Hundred percent. So I was going to go in another direction, but that brings me elsewhere. And we have a lot to cover. So I'm going to I'm going to try to do this briefly. Um, as you may know, in 2019, I passed a bill I called uh, Freedom to Serve. And uh, I am coming back with an expanded version of that. It's been law for three years. But those who have been honorably discharged from the military who would like to, who have been protecting our country, if they want to protect our community and serve as a police officer, a sheriff or something, if even if they are not yet a citizen, we think that they should be allowed to serve. And that's a way of addressing our ethnic and linguistic diversity, as well as our enormous crisis in recruitment. And uh, so don't know if you want to comment about that. So um, I think that that I applaud you for for um, advocating that um, anything that expands our recruitment pool and helps uh, definitely the sheriff's office and other agencies to find well qualified candidates that can that can serve and continue to serve the communities that oftentimes they live in. Um, yes, that's exactly the way I talk about it. Is a great tool. Is a great. There are tool. people who live near each other, who pray together, who go to the same restaurants, who go to the, yes. And there's a, it's easier to build trust. Uh, so yeah, great. Um, so there are a lot of different law enforcement entities at the local county, um, state and federal level. Can you talk briefly about how the sheriff's office works with all of those, uh, everyone from the FBI, to uh, Maryland State Police, Montgomery County Police, Municipal Police, Metro Police. Uh, there's so many, you know, park and planning. I'm sure I'm leaving out 20 more. Uh, why no, don't you speak sure. about collaboration? Absolutely. Um, I will say, and and I'm sure you recognize this, Senator, we are so blessed in Montgomery County to have uh, collaborative public safety agencies working together. And I'm talking about beyond um, our, our partnerships with Chief Jones with the County Police and, and Chief Goldstein with High Rescue and yes. uh, Angela Taylor with Corrections. As you mentioned, there are so many law enforcement entities that, that touch Montgomery County. And the Sheriff's Office does absolutely works collaboratively with each one of them. We, we are currently working on the Holiday Task Force to, um, uh, to STEM impaired driving within Drunk the county. Driving. Absolutely. And that is, yep. that is a collaboral, collaborative effort between Maryland State Police, our county police partners and all the municipalities and to include Maryland National Capital Park Police. Yes. Um, I, I maintain uh, deputies on the U.S. Marshals Task Force. Mm. And what that helps for the residents of Montgomery County is that brings um, uh, resources that we may not have as a county agency by working collaboratively together to really... Um, attempt to apprehend some of the most dangerous uh, fugitives um, in our area. Yes. Um, so it would be, uh, uh, I would be remiss as the uh, the person who's done eight years on 911 if I didn't ask about how you deal with 911. And then I'd also like to mention that Montgomery County is one of only six jurisdictions in the state that has a 311 system. And then let's also get to 988 in a moment. But if you can talk about uh, 911 and 311 first, that'd be great. Sure, absolutely. So um, regarding 911, uh, again, we're very fortunate in Montgomery County to have a robust um, emergency communication center or public safety um, communication center. Um, we are supported by um, by our communication center. So the deputy sheriffs, when they're out and about within the community, they utilize the the six radio channels that are assigned to the police districts, um, and that allows for commonality of um, uh, of dispatching 
Um, which we did not have on September 11th, 2001, which proved to be that, a huge problem. That is correct. And, and I do recall getting, getting away from 10 codes, going to plain English and, and those types of things. Um, so so we, we have that commonality of communications. We also have a commonality of training. Uh, so in the event there's a critical incident in the county, say a school or a religious facility, you might get a number of county officers, maybe a Rockville city officer, and you might get a deputy sheriff or two. Yes. We, but we integrate so so well that they can- But the radios, you can all communicate and all be on the same team. And that's correct. That's and we're actually in the process of continuing um, to look at technolo technological improvements. And my, my tech staff is very closely dialed in with our county police partners. Good. And how would you interact, if at all, with 311? So um, 311 does have our contact information. You can still, however, and this is something I want to continue that Chair Popkin had put in place, to continue to reach our individual sections. You can certainly, uh, um, a resident could certainly call 911 and get the information regarding the Sheriff's Office. But I'm also committed to having the, the phone numbers for the Sheriff's Office available. They're posted on our website. And we will ensure that somebody has a person to speak to from the sheriff's office, but 311 yes. is a great supporter as well. 311 is, so I have been working on making Maryland the very first state to have a statewide 311 system. I was in on Montgomery that. County, as I indicated, uh, Baltimore City was the very first, but DC has one, Baltimore City, Baltimore County, uh, Prince George's County, St. Mary's, and uh, but making it statewide. And that's trying to lighten the load on our 911 centers, which are just overburdened and like sheriff, like police officers and stuff are having, um, have a heck of a time trying to recruit, train and retain. And it is a challenge. I, I, it is, I don't know if I could do it. Uh, they, yes. they, they take the emotional investment in the calls and many times they don't get the closure because they don't get exactly. the opportunity to find out what happens. So they're exactly. just incredible folks. They are remarkable. I call them our 911 specialists, as we renamed them in law uh, when I passed a bill in memory of Carl Henn, my friend and constituent who died when 911 failed. One of three people oh, who died right. in my district when 911 failed. Um, we did a lot of things, including adjusting the funding formula and addressing geographic information and cybersecurity and all that, but we renamed them. Uh, and reclassified uh, 911 specialists. They are our first first responders, and I call them the courageous women and men under the headset. And uh, every time we have the opportunity to thank them and recognize them, we should be doing that. You're absolutely right. Let's let's pivot to 988. Uh, a, a lot of folks are still completely unaware of it. Uh, so it went public nationally July of this year, 2022, and it is a national. Uh, mental health suicide prevention crisis hotline. You can dial it anywhere in the country. And I wonder, Sheriff Wee, how, how you may overlap with 988. And, or have so, you started that yet? So, well, we will continue to um, push that out through our social media and, and have that information pushed out because especially in the last several years, and I'm not telling you, uh, Senator, or anything you don't know, there've been so many challenges um, yes. with isolation, the economy, although I do believe we're going to be in an upswing. I really do. I, I am an optimist uh, through and through, a glass half full, um, but there, there are certainly challenging times. And yes. between isolation, um, uh, so many deaths, tragic deaths um, that folks endured, and you know some of what our students are dealing with in the school system, again, all these things, it's just a tidal wave of challenges. So one of the things the sheriff's office uh, does is we serve court-ordered emergency evaluation petitions. When a family member or another interested third party is concerned that somebody might be a danger to themselves or others, there's the ability to petition the court to get a, um, a order directing law enforcement, the sheriff's office, yes. to take that person to an emergency facility uh, to get that emergency psychiatric treatment. Yes. And we have yep. seen the numbers of court order petitions, as well as petitions um, uh, generated by other law enforcement officers. They're really going going up. Yes. So there is no doubt that there is a need in our community for support. And as you mentioned, there are many people that just don't know where to turn. 
Right. So 988, know about it, use it as, and sh share it with friends and family. Um, I want to start to wrap up. I just have a few more questions. Um, there is a pattern of some significant longevity in the sheriff's office in Montgomery County. Uh, when I first got engaged in politics, Ray Kite was our sheriff for a very long time. And then Darren Popkin, uh, your predecessor, your partner, uh, predecessor. Um, so tell me briefly um, something that you want to make sure that you continue that you think is going great and something that you might like to change under the under the Sheriff Max Wee uh, administration? No, absolutely. So I will say that I have the utmost respect for each of the sheriffs you've mentioned, and I would not be where I am um, if it were not for opportunities under Sheriff Popkin and, and Sheriff Kite. Sheriff Kite hired me and Sheriff Popkin, I was fortunate to work my way through the ranks and be his number two running operations. Yep. So I, I will say that um, I want to continue to pledge to keep the great work the sheriff's office is doing, making sure that we're on cutting edge. We prescribe the best practices, that we recruit and hire the best and diverse candidates we can. Um, I, I tell you that I would love to see when it's time for me to, I'm just starting and I, and I look forward to serving the residents. Just, the just, just, two, not even two but, weeks. <laughs> but I will say that if there was the first female sheriff in Montgomery County qualified, I would love that. I think yes. that would be amazing. And yes. to provide provide opportunities for our staff to one day get, get there, um, I think that it's my job to prepare people for their future careers. Love um, it. That's great. I will, I will say that our Family Justice Center, there is such a need in not only domestic violence and family violence and some of the things you've highlighted um, I would like to expand the services, and there are um, different proposals that are working right now that I will support um, with expansion uh, to 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 provide that just beyond just domestic violence, um, some other power-based violence, um, but everything takes funding and staff, but, but I think we can get there. Yeah. Great. We will watch for that inf information with interest. Um, the last question before Fast Five. Um, we're getting a new governor, new lieutenant governor. I am on the public safety transition team uh, for the Moore Miller administration. What are you hoping to see from our new, uh, the new gubernatorial administration? Well, I'm I'm very excited uh, about the the historic um, uh, uh, appointments, uh, the governor and lieutenant governor, and I, I just really am excited to work collaboratively um, on some of the initiatives that uh, Governor Moore. Uh, is going to challenge. Uh, there, there is a lot evolving with um, police accountability, and yep. uh, certainly within the county, with the PAB, the Police Accountability uh, Board, and the Administrative Charging Committees, uh, we are still we're ahead of a lot of counties, um, but in many ways we're still in the infancy. And um, I look forward to, as a leader of the sheriff's office, to work collaboratively um, to to make sure that we're transparent. Um, and that we are meeting the needs of the community. That's great. Thank you. So, Sheriff Max Wee, Fast Five, five quick questions, quick answers. Question number one, what is your all-time favorite crime TV show? Police oh and crime TV show. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. A reason here. Uh, you know what? There's so many. I, I, I love um, Magnum P.I. I wasn't really a crime show, but I did. I, I love some classic 80s Magnum P.I. All right. So that, that, one jumps out. that one jumps out, um, right? Uh, you know, the Hawaiian shirts, the the Rolex watch and the, the flashy car. I, I refer <laughs> none of that, no mustache, but um, but uh, definitely um, enjoyed watching. There you shows. go. Question two, what is your favorite genre of music that you like to listen to? You know, I like a little bit of everything. I, I, I it, it, grown up in the 80s and I definitely like some of the, some of the, uh, Stuff coming out of the '70s, I'm, literally everything, everything okay. from rock to pop. Um, you know, I saw uh, some of uh, some of the evolution. I mean, about break dancing, some of that music. <laughs> so, okay, so there, there is not a lot I don't like unless it's really, really loud. I, I don't necessarily, but uh, okay, love it all. Um, question three: If you could travel back in time to any era in American history, what would you choose? Hmm. And why? Well, I will tell you that I do love history. 
Um, and I'm fortunate that my wife, who's a teacher in, uh, in the county, we, we, we like to, uh, we're history geeks and history nerds. And we often love to go to national parks and other things. But I, I would say that, um, you know, when we look back in that 1700 era um, and see when folks were trying to make that decision, had the vision of a, of a new country here in the United mm. States. And certainly we, we had our share of missteps, right? Um, but the ability and uh, to have that thought and and the um, uh, and and uh, I think that would be wonderful. I think it would be great to see be a be a fly on the wall to see those conversations. Now, of course, they were men at the time, but you know, I'd like to see what what they were thinking. The okay. audacity is what I'm trying to think to Love to, to okay. believe that we could have the country that. We have a lot of challenges, but the United States is such a wonderful country. I mean, and and Amen. we always want to improve, but when we yep. look around some of the things that are going on around the world now, um, somebody has to step up and has to uh, be a leader. And I, I think we are still that country that's the leader. Yes, yes. Uh, question four, you seem very healthy and fit. What is your favorite junk food, your favorite guilty oh pleasure? I, I, I like a lot of sugar and junk food. I'm Reese's peanut butter cups. Okay. okay. I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a, but there's, there's not a lot of sugar. I don't like. Okay. <laughs> I love that. All right. Your dentist appreciates that. I'm sure. Um, the fifth question, the one I ask every guest, Sheriff Max, we, what is your hidden secret superpower? What oh. is a skill or talent you have something you're really good at that most folks can't do? Um, well, you know, I can't play an instrument, but I, I, I have, I do have the ability to. Uh, I've calmed a number of crying babies. I don't know if that's a superpower. I've raised two kids. That's pretty good. Um, and uh, I've had, I've been uh, blessed to have a number of nieces and nephews. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm reassuring, but I'll take that. <laughs> add, that works. That works. Well, Mr. Sheriff Max, thank you so much for taking the time to chat today and. Best of luck to you as you launch what I know will be a long and successful career. Thank you so much for taking time to chat today. Thank you, Senator, for your time. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. See you soon. Take care. Take care.